Robert Maplethorpe's powerful black and white portrait photography has so much it can teach you about creating impact within your own photographs, irrespective of whether or not you are a portrait photographer. How's, how's it? Welcome back to the channel. It is fantastic to see you here. Look at this photograph. It's two figures against a dark background. They feel not like people, but more like sculptures. They're lit softly. There is no shadows in there. It's just, it's like the two people are carved from a block of marble and a block of obsidian. Rather than concentrating on the people themselves, the two men, Mablethorpe has reduced them to shape, to sculpture. And that's the power of his portrait photography at work. The ability to create very strong visual shapes from organic objects. Robert Mapplethorpe was, it's fair to say, a controversial photographer, lived in New York in the 1970s, 1980s. And we're not going to talk about his, let's say, more, um, you know, shocking photography today, because, you know, it's YouTube. And also, while that was what I was kind of first drawn towards because of its shock value as a teenager, it overshadows his wonderful, awesome, impactful portrait photography, which can teach us so much about how to craft an image whose memory stays with us long after we've stopped looking at it. Grace Jones, staring out from the screen, powerful, connecting with you. Why does this photograph work so well? Why is it so striking? And that's because Robert Maplethorpe has chosen to frame her in this this drape, this sheet, whatever you want to call it. And it's been lit with a softbox from above. So not only is he lighting her face, but he's also picking out the textures on the, 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 the drape itself. It's framing her. There's a little bit of a, of a fill reflector coming in from beneath just to lighten up the shadows a bit so it doesn't go too dark. And then she is surrounded by this inky blackness. So what happens is her face comes out like a face from the gloom, comes out and connects with it. We immediately, the eye looking at this is left in no doubt what is the subject of this photograph. It is simple, and I'm going to use the word simple a lot, but it is so difficult when you are not exercising this idea of thinking about framing the whole time. When you're photographing anything, what is the subject that you are photographing? Once you've decided the subject, then how can you make it the star of the show? Framing doesn't have to be just an object or a physical thing. It can be light as well. This photograph of Debbie Harry here, look at the way that she is almost like a cameo against, again, that black background. She's wearing like a black dress, something. So we just see this, the, the sweep of her shoulders and down to her chest. And, the, you know, that's... Again, look at if she was photographed against a white background, where there wouldn't be this contrast between her skin and the back, what would happen? She would be lost. It would lose the dramatic feel to it. If you, if you look at this image and squint your eyes, so it's just a blur, you can still make out the shape of her profile, the shape of the head, but it's not an obvious person because the black with the with the shoulder is sort of cutting it off there. So you see, you know, framing doesn't have to be those physical things. Try it out with lighting as well. Maplethorpe took a lot of self-portraits throughout his career. And I'm especially interested in this one because we're talking about framing. Look at the the sweep of the shoulder pads on his jacket, the, the, that white beading that go up to the, the um, you know, the collar in there. And then we see the teddy boy haircut. And the reason why that sort of stands out and has a bit more of an interest to it is because of those two rolls of, I think they're studio paper that are put up in the background. And then we have the, the blank wall of the studio that's been lit very softly behind just to frame the head. Because then it says to us, what we're doing here is we're looking at the back of the photograph. We're looking at the back of the person, but this is about their head. We want to show off the head. What a wonderfully bold self-portrait. How many of you would consider doing this? Consider taking a portrait of a person where it didn't show anything of their face whatsoever. What wonderful graphicness. Think about how you can employ 
these ideas of photographing in shapes and not things within your own images. Robert Maplethorpe and Patti Smith were great friends when they moved to New York and they were both, you know, the beginning of their careers and, and they lived together for a while and they were in a relationship. And Maplethorpe took a lot of pictures of Patti Smith and it's the images from the horse album cover sort of time that I want to look at because they illustrate a really good point about simplicity in photographs in regards to the things that people are wearing. In this image, we have Patti Smith, she's got black hair. She's got that white shirt, that man's shirt. She's got that jacket. She's got her pants that, you know, that are black. And the whole thing is black, white, black, white, black, white. So it has that graphic simplicity again, just like with the framing earlier where there's a simplicity to it. In this image, it's the, the elements that are pretty much just black and white. There's kind of little shades of, of gray in between, but nothing too much. And that's, I think, wonderfully expressive way of bringing in impact into the photo because we're not giving subtlety. We're not giving lovely gradation of tone. We're not talking about an Ansel Adams type sort of zone system thing here. We're talking about black, white, and maybe one or two things in between. And that echoes the power of Patti Smith. You know, she is angry. She's this kind of passive aggressive sort of person. And then you have this wonderful photograph, this awesome picture where the light has become a lot stronger coming in through the window. And it's created this, this diagonal that cuts straight across the frame. And instead of going, oh, do you know what? I've got, we can't photograph here anymore because it's, there's this light coming through. He's decided, oh, do you, we're just gonna go with it. We're gonna use that in kind of like a, a 1930s German dada iski kind of, you know, Bauhausy and, and any other sort of thing I can sort of think of way of lighting her. And it's beautiful. I love it. So next time that you are trying to create something that has, you know, a, a kind of a, a, a sort of a powerful sort of feeling, break it down, break down the elements into simple things, because that will make it again so much stronger. Robert Maplethorpe was a master at using shape and form within his photography to create this impact that you've been seeing. And if you'd like to learn more about how to harness shape and form and other crucial aspects of building a photograph so it really does resonate with a the viewer, then check out my Learning to See course on the links below. I think you'll find it's really, it's a great way of getting to grips with these sort of somewhat hidden secrets about you know, improving your photography. Maplethorpe is also well known for photographing the landscape of the body, of the shape and the form of body part in an often interesting kind of way. This photograph of Lisa Lyon, where she's tilted her head back and we have this kind of weird mountain <laughs> sort of feel that is, again, sculptural. And that's where if you spend any time listening to, to Maplethorpe or watching or reading about Maplethorpe, you'll see the word sculpture will come up quite a lot. But it's what a wonderful way of, of investigating the form of someone in a way that we, you know, that's gone beyond the norm. Because if you've, you know, spent any time looking at nudes, you're gonna know the sort of things that you tend to see. And I don't recall any other times where I'm seeing this kind of landscape of the body. When you start combining the landscape of the body with you know, some of the ideas of framing that we had earlier, then you end up with like this kind of photograph where you have a leg, you know, like it's growing out of the, of the ground, framed again by that very dramatic V shape. So it gives a lot of, of movement in that image. And I just, I love the idea that what could be just very basic, very simple, image, and there's that word again, right, has been elevated just a little bit by the addition of something that is subtle, doesn't override the image, doesn't shout out, look at me, look at me, much like the, the, the diagonal in the Patti Smith photograph, but it enhances the photograph, and it, it, it complements it, and it's put together in the image deliberately. That's always the question. Look at any of these photographs. There is nothing haphazard about them. Everything within Maplethorpe's photographs has been created deliberately and that's why they have a very strong graphic sense to them. That's why they have 
this lasting impact on you because the eye can break it down into very basic shapes. And that's why also you look at it and you go, wow, how amazing is that? Because it is so simple. I don't know about you, but I am most impressed when I see something that is done it with, with perfection. And that's really much like the cooking analogy, where if you're going to cook a very basic dish, there is no way to hide. Maplethorpe's portrait photography is like this. His work is perfection because it is simple. He's not hiding some rough around the edges stuff with technique, with, or, you know, with, with fancy pants technique or, you know, mucking around with things. Everything is done deliberately. Do that in your own photography. Make sure that whatever you choose to include or, or choose to exclude is done with intent, with purpose. None of these photographs leave you in any doubt whatsoever what the subject is, what you are supposed to be looking at. Some of them may raise questions within, oh, what is what that sort of thing going on, especially some of Maplethorpe's self-portraits, but everything else is direct and to the point. Throughout this video, I haven't really touched upon Maplethorpe's flower photographs, not because I don't like them or whatever, because I do like them. I think they're great and they're great exponents or great examples rather of many of the lessons that you have learned here today. And if you'd like to check out more of Maplethorpe's flower work, I'll link in the description box below to the Robert Maplethorpe Foundation because it, it really go and check out his photographs. He is so much more than just the shock value, the the you know the the, the kind of stuff that gets paraded around, you know, all the kind of the little left of center kind of things. He's he's deeply interesting. He's a fantastically talented, or was a fantastically talented photographer. And as I mentioned earlier, I really wish that you know that more focus was given on his whole body of work, especially for people just getting you know, being introduced to Maplethorpe than, than the kind of the, you know, the, the S&M stuff, which is, you know, whatever. Looking at the work of other photographers is a great way of improving your photography, not simply from an inspirational point of view, but also from a, you know, a technical point of view where you get to learn and see the processes that they go through. And the more that you do, the more that you pick apart, like we've been doing the photographs today, the more you become in tune with how you can employ those techniques within your own photographs. For more insights on how to do this by looking at other photographers' work, check out this video over here. Thank you ever so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon.